last year you had people like Erling Haaland who just clearly was going to be it and then previous years like Salah and De Bruyne and stuff like that but I think this year there have been so many good players and no real standout so I thought it would be interesting if I did a sort of power rankings of it right now at least what I think uh, the top 15 Premier League players oh, sorry not 15 wait yeah 15 uh, got confused there but yeah I've picked out 15 players in order of the what I personally would do as the player of the season rankings and of course this is very very reliant on the Premier League and who actually wins it and where teams finish in the Prem because you know usually whoever wins the Prem most likely their best player will get it but I kind of just based on right now if the season ended right now let's just forget about who wins the league who is the player of the season so I've run them from 15 to 1 based on my personal opinion on like their performances how important they've been to their team and the success their team has had and stuff like that uh, of course get in the comments below anybody who you think should be in this 15 anyone who you think should be higher or lower and of course who is the player of the season in your opinion it will probably change by the end of the season but yeah let's uh let's just begin then so we'll begin with number 15 which is Jared Bowen West Ham West Ham are no longer riding the wave of their 2022-23 Europa Conference League success but they are still in the mix for a top 7 finish under David Moyes a lot of the credit must go to Bowen who scored the winner in their famous final victory over Fiorentina last May he's improved his finishing to help Bahamas become one of the most effective counter-attacking sides in the league 27 year old is already up to 15 Premier League goals this season, nine more than he managed in the whole of last term, and has managed to set up another five as a focal point in Mohammed's attack. Bowen has forced his way into the England squad as a result and could start attracting interest from top clubs if he continues on his current trajectory. A Euro spot looks almost guaranteed for Bowen. And the way he has transitioned this season to play as a number nine is superb. If West Ham weren't as trash as they are, he would probably be getting a lot more props than he currently is and would be slightly higher on this list. But I thought I need to give him a shout out because he is having a fantastic season. Number 14. Darwin Nunes, Liverpool. Nunes struggled to adapt to the base for English football in his debut year at Anfield, but has gradually transformed into Liverpool's master of chaos, and opposition defences are having a torrid time trying to keep him at bay. A haul of 20 goal contributions from 30 games proves that Nunes had added end product to his game, even if he doesn't always make the right decision in the final it's very difficult to predict what Nunes will do when he gets a sight at goal, which is part of the reason he is so thrilling to watch. And it's frightening to think how much potential he still has left to unlock at the age of just 24. Liverpool fans have taken Nunes into their hearts because of his fearless, explosive style of play, and his razor sharp instincts could end up giving club side the edge in the final, final title run in. The only reason he's not higher is because, I mean, particularly at the start of in, he has still been very wasteful in front of goal. Nevertheless, superb improvement from last season and is having a fantastic year. Number 13, Martin Odegaard, Arsenal. Odegaard hit his 7th Premier League goal of the season in a 2-0 home victory versus Luton and looks determined to carry the Gunners to their first title in 20 years. The Norwegian never made the grade at Real Madrid, but they must now be ruining their decision to give up 
his work rate out of possession, setting a shining example for his teammates. At just 25 years of age, there is still plenty of potential left for Odegaard to unlock, and he will fancy his chances of going on to become a Gunners legend. While last season may have been slightly better for Odegaard on a personal level, he's still been superb this year and will be a major reason Arsenal win the league if they do. Number 12. Son Young Min. Tottenham. There was a lot of pressure on Son to deliver for Spurs this season. After Harry Kane's departure to Bayern Munich, the South Korean became the main man in the team, which was further underlined by Ange Postecoglou's decision to hand him the captaincy. By his own admission, last campaign was Son's most disappointing in a Tottenham shirt to date. However, the 31-year-old has shown he has still has plenty left in the tank, while swapping between his usual position on the left and a central striker role this term. Son has hit 15 goals, including vital late efforts against Crystal Palace and Luton in March, showing once again that he is impeccable when it comes to the art of finishing. Postecoglou will need him to keep sprinkling his magic if the North London outfit are to regain a place in the Champions League this season. Son has perhaps been the most improved player this season as he is well and truly back to his best, and deserves major credit for stepping up as the main man for Spurs this season. Number 11. Cole Palmer, Chelsea. Palmer made the brave decision to leave Man City last summer, and has since proven to be one of the bargains of the season for Chelsea at £42 million. The 21-year-old has been the biggest bright spark throughout another frustrating campaign for the Blues, showing maturity and composure, taking on a leading role in Pochettino's setup. The Argentine has deployed Palmer in a number of different positions, and he's risen to the challenge each time. Palmer can execute a defence splitting pass from anywhere on the pitch and has a real eye for goal, which has earned him a senior call-up to England this year. Palmer recently hit a hat trick versus Man United, which has taken him to 16 goals and 8 assists in the Prem this year, which is more goal contributions than anybody in Europe under the age of 21. Admittedly, a lot of these were penalties, but that doesn't take anything away from his great performances. Chelsea still have a long way to go before they can challenge the elite again but they have one of the most exciting talents in Europe on their hands in Palmer, and it'd be fascinating to see how he continues to develop in the coming months. If Josie were not a mid-table side, Palmer would be a lot higher, as unfortunately all of his great performances and goals likely won't mean much for Josie in the Premier League this season. Although, I guess you could argue without him we would probably be relegated. Number 10. William Saliba, Arsenal. Arsenal are back within sight of a Premier League summit, and this time they may just have the staying power, with Saliba providing a rock solid base in the heart of the defence. The Frenchman was in the treatment rate for the business end of last year, and the Gunners fell apart in his absence, but he has returned in better shape than ever before. Arteta's side have the best defensive record in the division so far, which is largely thanks to Saliba's immense displays. The 23 year old is a master when it comes to timing tackles and has the cool head to help Arsenal turn defence into attack. The Gunners are leaving no stone unturned in their bid to knock City off their perch, but no one is more important to the collective cause than Saliba who must be wrapped up in cotton wool between matches. Him and Gabriel have probably been the best centre-back pairing in world football, based just on this season alone. Number 9. Gabriel. Arsenal. Speaking of his centre-back partner, Gabriel has 
has had just as good, if not a better season than Saliba. Gabriel had a bit of a reputation for being kind of rash and a bit clumsy at points, which we did see a lot last season. However, this season he's completely got rid of that side of his game, as he's had virtually zero errors or rash moments this season, which is a large reason for Arsenal's better defensive record this season. Furthermore, Gabriel has become a weapon going forward for Arsenal, grabbing a very impressive four goals this season from set pieces. Arsenal have become perhaps the best team in the world when it comes to utilising set pieces, and that's because Gabriel is on the end of those innovative corners and free kicks, towering above players to head it into the back of the net. Those goals have been vital as well, including a goal at Anfield to give Arsenal a 1 1 draw which we could look back on as a pivotal moment if Arsenal win the league. Gabriel still doesn't get the respect he deserves in my opinion, as he has been one of the best centre-backs in world football this season. Number 8. Virgil van Dijk, Liverpool So many people wrote Virgil van Dijk off after a dismal campaign, but He's shown that class is permanent over the past nine months, rolling back the years to Leeds Klopp's new crop of mentality monsters. There isn't a more complete defender in the game than Van Dijk when he's firing on all cylinders, and that has been the case every time he's taken it to the pitch this term, as he's dominated in one-on-one -on -one duels and won everything in the air, while setting the tone for Liverpool's attacks with his quality on the ball. Klopp's shock decision to step down as head coach only seemed to give Van Dijk another injection of motivation, as evidenced by his stunning performance in the cup final victory over Chelsea, which he capped by heading in the winning goal. The Dutchman is now doing everything in his power to make sure Klopp signs off with a second Premier League crown, and this season could end up being classed as the best of a 32-year-old's entire career if he can keep up his outstanding level of performance and captain Liverpool to a title. Number 7. Bakayo Saka Arsenal Saka deservedly scooped the 22-23 PFA Young Player of the Year award after spearheading Arsenal's surprise title charge a majors BM with a shout of landing the senior prize this time around, having made another huge stride forward under Mikel Arteta. The Gunners have paced themselves far better this season, and seem to be hitting top gear at just the right time, with Saka proving to be the difference maker at the top end of the pitch once again. The 22-year-old can score from any angle, and has the creative qualities to open up defences, which is why he has already posted 22 goal contributions this term. Even though, at points his form has dipped, since the turn of the year he has been sensational. Arteta is now having to manage Saka's minutes more effectively, but he will continue to be Arsenal's most important player in the biggest games, as he blocks out the critics. If Saka can fire the Gunners to the Premier League trophy, the debate of whether he is world class or not will be closed once and for all. Number 6. Erling Haaland, Manchester City. Haaland is on course to win a second successive Golden Boot with 19 league goals to his name in the current campaign, despite being absent in December and January due to injury which is pretty remarkable. However, the 23-year-old has only managed to find the net four times in nine appearances since his return. More and more questions are being asked over Haaland's lack of involvement in general play, with Man United legend Roy Keane claiming he looked like a League 2 player during City's recent 0-0 draw with Arsenal. It is certainly fair to say that the Norway international needs to work on the technical side of the game, but, as Guardiola has pointed out, he's still the best striker in world football. Even when he's on the periphery.
periphery of games. Harlan Balls took it the chances because of his intelligent movement in and around the box. He's also a strong character who doesn't let negative comments bring him down and will use them as fuel. Harlan remains the most deadly weapon in Guardiola's arsenal and after a much needed rest against Villa, he is poised to unleash his full power. By his very, very high standards he set last season, this year has been a bit of a drop off, but he's still been great and it wouldn't surprise me if he ended up scoring 10 goals in the last 8 games of the season. But I can't rank him higher as he has missed a lot of the season and has been a little bit inconsistent with his form. Number 5 Ollie Watkins, Aston Villa. Watkins has been Villa's main source of goals since his arrival at the club in 2020 and bagged 15 during the club's run to a top 7 finish last season. But he has now taken his game to new heights under Unai Emery. The 28 year old is already up to 16 goals this term, five of which he registered across a free three games, while he's also managed to lay on another 10 for his teammates, which has caught the eye of England boss Gareth Southgate. Those 26 goal contributions are the most of any player in the Brent, which is astonishing when you think of all the attacking talent in the league. Villa have fallen off the base of the top of the table, which was always a likely scenario, but they are still very much in the battle for a top four finish. And that's mainly due to Watkins. If a Villa talisman can keep delivering the goods, he will surely book a seat on the plane to Germany with his country. And if he can fire Villa into the Champions League, potentially even as a Premier League top scorer, as he's not too far off Holland, then he is in with a massive shout of player of the season. Number four, Declan Rice. Arsenal. Arsenal's club record £105 million signing. Rice has been an instant hit since swapping West Ham for the bright lights of the Emirates, having opted for a move across London instead of joining Guardiola's Man City. Rice is already the first name on Arteta's team sheet and has endeared himself to supporters with crucial late goal of the Gunners. Man United back in August. The 25 year old is unmatched when it comes to the ball recoveries and interceptions this season, but he also carries a real threat going forward, as evidenced by his stunning long range efforts against Chelsea and West Ham. The England international also showed off his dead ball expertise in the 6 0 demolition of his former club, as he notched up two assists, having been appointed Arsenal's new permanent corner taker at the turn of the year. Rice's willingness to embrace extra responsibility is what really makes him special and his infectious energy has lifted Arsenal to another level. Winning a first Premier League crown since 2004 no longer feels like a pipe dream for the Gunners because they have one of the best all-round midfielders in the country leading their charge. Number three, Rodri, Manchester City. Rodri's status as the best defensive midfielder in Europe is unquestionable. The Spaniard was the driving force behind City's run to the treble and even scored the winner in the Champions League final. The 27-year-old looks as motivated as ever in 23-24 too, with his tenacity and energy setting the tone for City. Guardiola initially brought in Rodri as a successor to Fernandinho, but he must now be classed as an upgrade on the Brazilian, which is a massive compliment to him, as Fernandinho was exceptional. Rodri has no flaws in his game, and City suffer when he is absent, as illustrated when Guardiola's side slumped a band to band defeats against Wolves and Arsenal in October without their star midfielder. In fact, it's been over 60 games since Rodri last lost a game in Man City Blue, which is absolutely mental and highlights his importance to the side. City needs Rodri to maintain discipline so that they are not hampered by any further suspensions, especially given the fact he is also making an important contribution going forward. Rodri 
has hit seven Premier goals, with his latest superb strike setting City on their way to a vital win at Aston Villa. He can always be relied upon to seize the game in the tightest matches. He also scored a vital goal versus Chelsea to get a 1-1 draw, and another vital goal versus them to get a 4-4 draw. He scored another late winner this time, early in the season versus Sheffield United, which shows just how clutch he has been this season. Without these goals, City would be almost out of the title race now, as he's won points for them on numerous occasions. Add to that an impressive six assists, with those seven goals, 13 goal contributions for a defensive midfielder is insane. Number two, Mohamed Salah, Liverpool. Salah's status as a Liverpool legend has long been secured, and he proved his loyalty to the club beyond all reasonable doubt when Al Itty had a game calling in the summer. St Salah stayed put and has since shown his unique value to club side once again. Liverpool have picked up 70 points for a possible 90 to emerge as the main challenges for City's ground, with Salah recording 17 goals and 9 assists along the way. The 31 year old looks as dangerous as ever and will be backing himself to beat Holland for Golden Boot. Salah's main focus, however, will be locked on winning a second Premier League winner's medal, which would cement his status as one of the greatest players to ever grace English football. An unfortunate Afghan injury holds Salah's momentum, but he's now starting to build up a rhythm again, which is bad news for City and Arsenal. There is a general sense that something special is happening at Anfield, with Klopp eyeing a glorious end to his nine-year reign, and if anyone can push them over the line, it's Salah. If Salah wins for Brent as the Golden Boot winner yet again, serious conversations will be had about where Salah ranks in terms of all-time Premier League players. In at number one, my favourite for player of the season is Phil Foden, Manchester City. City have been blessed with a host of creative geniuses during the Guardiola era, but Foden is well on his way to eclipsing all of them. At just 23, he already looked like a complete player, and is now the one City turned to to open games up. Foden has 14 Premier League goals to his name already this season, his best ever total, and there could be plenty more to come if he stays fit. The England man has become the most feared member of an all-star city team and looks unstoppable right now, with his latest performance coming in a 4-1 win over Villa, which saw him net his second hat-trick of the season. It's no exaggeration to say his presence alone could be the deciding factor as the champions aim to seal another Premier League crown. England's status as one of the favourites for the Euros also has a lot to do with Foden, who sits in the world-class bracket already and has all the attributes to go on and become one of the greatest players of his generation. Of course, the player of the season will come down largely to who wins the Brent, but even if City don't win the league, Foden will be a massive favourite for the award, and if City do win the league, even another treble which could happen. Maybe he has a great Euros and who knows England win the Euros. Well, the 2024 Ballon d'Or will be firmly within his sights. So there we go, those are my 15 favourites for the player of the season this year. You can really have any of them in any order. To be honest, if any of the people I listed in this was at number one, I really wouldn't complain because all of them have had fantastic seasons. It was very hard to separate them, but let me know your list down below, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a like, consider subscribing.